So today I'm talking about 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 21. So uh, I'm just going to read it and I'm going to pause in between to talk about what I feel like those verses have been saying to me and are saying. Uh, and this is Paul writing. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. I think this is huge, especially for, for us today in, in today's day and age, but I'm sure in every generation it's been huge. But it seems like the world, the way they judge the flesh is through how you look, how you talk, your education, your travels, your who you come from, and all that. And, um, and that's where you get your value. And what Paul is saying here, we don't, we're not looking at that. And just like we didn't look at that, we thought that Christ, especially from Paul talking, I, he regarded Jesus as someone who is, you know, according to the flesh, just like how you would judge anybody else. But um, he learned through his interaction with Christ that we, we don't judge him that way. And I think this is so key because so much of our society um, I mean, I work in a, in a high school, so, you know, high school, I feel like it's just exemplified about how people judge other people. And, um, but so much is placed, their value is placed in looks and in how people disregard other people like, oh, they're nothing. Um, whether it, uh, you know, when you go to a grocery store and you don't necessarily think, oh, they're nothing, but you don't you don't put them in the category of this is somebody who Christ uh, voluntarily died for. And so this is someone I need to regard in that, in that way. And it's not putting, it's, it's about not putting uh, labels on anyone of like, Oh, they're a good person or bad person. They're a person. Um, Then 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And so, so much more as with Christians, not putting them into categories, but they are, they are now a brother or sister in Christ and interacting with them in that level. And um, a story that I heard once was, I don't know who it was. She was a missionary. She was in prison because of her faith. And there was another prisoner and in, in the facility that I think she was in the same room as um, the missionary. And she was somebody who, she had done some extremely violent crime. And this lady, she would just sit and rock back and forth. She wouldn't take care of herself. And so she smelled really bad. She, her hair was always in front of her face and she just moaned and groaned and screamed all the time. And so all the other prisoners were like, ugh, like they didn't want to be by her. They were frustrated by her. They were upset with her. But the missionary felt God saying, this is, this is someone who I died for and you are to love her. And so this missionary would go and she would rock, she would put her arms around and she would rock with her. She would hold her, even though she, she smelled very bad and she was very loud. And I'm sure this missionary was very uncomfortable doing this. But because of this missionary's love for God and therefore for this woman, this woman ended up coming to Christ and being a totally new creation. She took, she took care of herself. She ended up being just as, you know, you wouldn't know that that's where she came from. And so it leads on to this, um, that is in Christ was reconciling, oh, sorry, all this from God who through Christ reconciled us to to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting the, their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So this is huge. And I think this is what that missionary was doing is she was, this was, she was doing the ministry of reconciliation. She was sharing the love of Christ with this woman 
so that this woman could be reconciled with Christ and therefore with, with her and with other Christians. Uh, therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. And that is, that is intimidating. Cool, but intimidating that God is making his appeal through us. He is not just saying, oh, here's the truth, it's out there um, and for people to discover. He's saying, no, you are my ambassadors. You are to go and to live amongst and to, to make the appeal, to, to share my love, to talk to others about being reconciled to God, to give God's message of love and forgiveness of sins so that others can be reconciled to God. And he uses us to do this. So it's a privilege and an honor, but it's also something that we carry and we need to carry. And, and carrying doesn't mean just like, oh yeah, I'll remember to do that. But this is our, our mission. I think of, when I think of reaching out to others, when I think of being ambassadors, I think of the the verse, uh, Philippians 2, 3, uh, in humility, think more of each other than you do of yourselves. Because if this missionary would have thought more of herself and her comfort and her, I'm sure being in prison was just in itself a huge, a huge imposition, a huge burden, a huge challenge. But God was saying, even within this context, I want you to push yourself even more and, and to share my love. Instead of just, you know, enduring, she was thriving and she was continuing on God's purposes in her life. And I also think about how we are to deny ourselves and take up our cross daily. And that definitely, again, I go back to that mission, I think, like she took up her cross and her challenge by God is to love others. Our challenge is to love others. And it's not just to love the ones who are simple to love, it's to love everyone. And so that is, that is a deep challenge for us. So in the last verse, for our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Because Jesus was the ultimate example of humility when he took on the sins of the world on the cross so that we could have a right relationship with God, He's the ultimate example of how we are to do this ambassadorship to others. God, Jesus was the, the first to be an ambassador of his message to the world. And now we are called to continue that. And it is, it's a glorious privilege. And it's, and it's something that we need to be encouraging each other to do and think about daily. Thank you.